Yeah, this is James in the pockets. Story time. It's been a challenge put out there. See who has the best, the one that got away story. I ain't saying that I, I've got a couple of them, but I ain't saying mine's any better than anybody else's. I'll let you be the one to decide. I was young, in my mid-twenties, um, go by this car lot I go by all the time going home from work, 1972, Corvette, blue, V8, four-speed, side pipes, had the recess headlights, did away with the pop-up headlights, had the recess headlight, had the large L88 hood scoop hood on it. 15 by 8 Kragers all the way around, white letters. Do I need to say any more? Yeah, well, here's where the story gets interesting. I was married to a woman who didn't quite share my passion, addiction, whatever you want to call this, is to the car culture. So, I went and found out how much it was, and it was a fair sum of money. Even back then, it was a good price, but it was still a fair sum of money. So, and I didn't know how I was going to come up with the money, anything like that. So, but you know how it is, happy, happy wife, happy life, that kind of thing. You, you want to have them okay with it. Because, you know, you're about to go in debt for something if you can get the car. So, I worked it out. I had, the car was, everything all in was $5,500. Yeah, $5,500. Which was a lot of money back then. And I had $500 of my own. And I needed to borrow the five grand. Well, <clears throat> I worked for a gentleman who owned his own business who uh, was very uh, a good boss in, the, in a way that if you were a good employee and I was like his uh, manager for the place, so I mean, I was number one employee, I'll just say that. Um, and anytime you borrowed money, like uh, I'd talk to him, a uh, hundred dollar payback on every thousand borrowed, so when the tall total of the car was going to cost me $6,000. I was tickled because my boss even come by to the car lot because he wasn't going to loan me the money unless he seen the car, unless he thought it was worth it. He come by, he didn't even want to hear it run. He just walked around and said, okay. So I ran it past my wife. She said, well, let me see what, what the car looks like. That's an awful lot of money. I said, yeah, and then let me tell you something. I never used my bill money to pay for my car addiction. I always did jobs on the side and, and paid stuff that way. So I was never taken away from the home life, just saying that. And uh, she she gets out of the car and she walks up to it and she's like, this is it? And I said, yeah. She says, well, you can't have that. I said, well, why not? She's like, it's only got two seats. I said, yeah, that's what Corvettes are. They only have two seats. So he's like, well, you're not single, and we've got four kids. What good is a car going to do you that only has two seats? I, I don't know. This is stupid. Let, let's go. And we kind of got into it a little bit, as you might might get. Uh, how some people, how couples get you. You know what I'm saying. So... I mean, I, and I didn't want to just like go right out and defy her, because I could have, you know, I mean, I'm the one, I'm the, the breadwinner of the house, you know, it, it could have been, but I didn't want to do that. So every day I'd have the same conversation, I'd drive by, I'd say it was still there, I'd have the same conversation with her. Uh, long into probably the second week, maybe every bit of the second week, uh, you know, I'm driving by, the car's still there, and I'm talking to her about it, and I even come up with a way to sell one of my other cars that I had. And, and let me tell you something, she's talking about the two-seater. We had 
a nine passenger van and we had a third road seating station wagon uh, yeah well, along with my and I had a pickup truck and uh, I'm trying to think what else I had at the time anyway that's that doesn't matter it's not part of the story but anyways finally get to where you know it's oh, okay whatever it's your money uh, I don't I don't see why you want it why you think you need it it's a two-seater you know what what person who is not single would want a two-seater car she doesn't get it she thinks it like it's I'm trying to get a car to collect to, to try to hook up with girls or something I don't know anyways so she finally said yeah okay oh I was excited so it was late that at night so I get up go to work the car's still there so I'm working all day uh, and I left for lunch and I went down to the car lot to make the deal. The car's gone. Mm -hmm. A person had put a down payment on it the night before and came that morning and put the rest of the money down on it to drive it away. Yeah. You know, that was probably Oh, good Lord, 20, 30, almost 30 years ago. And I'm still salty over that. But that's my story of one that got away. And it didn't have to be. So, anyways. If you take anything from this, the lesson learned is if you're going to get a, 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 a mate, a partner, a spouse... Make sure, if they're not car people, they understand 100% of what they're getting into when they uh, come to be with you for life. Because if not, you're going to have problems. Every time you go to do something with a car deal, you're going to have a problem. Try not to have that problem. Try to avoid that problem. Till next time, this is James. Empty Pockets Garage. I'm out.